Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the F14 build. We are covering the equipment and getting the landing gear put back together in this video. So generally, the first video after the unboxing, we would be doing this, but we're doing it in the second video just because we were waiting on stuff. So not a big deal, but stay tuned and we'll dive into the equipment that we're putting in this aircraft. All right guys, so we've got most of the equipment here now uh, and it has arrived. We're waiting on a couple things for this build. So one of the primary things we're waiting on is the Jetty 24 channel transmitter. And that is going to be a shop radio, which is super awesome. So David, thank you very much for that. Uh, the second thing we're waiting on is a few servos and another receiver. So. Um, let's dive into this equipment first of all and take a look at what is going in this F-14. We've got some really cool equipment. Also, there's stuff that I've never used before, like a Jetty radio system. I've never, never even played with one before, never flown a plane with one before. So I'm actually really excited myself to be able to learn and use that radio system. And uh, it, it's going to be awesome. So anyways, let's take a look at what we got here. All right, so we'll start with the big boxes right here. Uh, this is obviously the turbines. So we've got a matching pair of Jetsmunts turbines going in this aircraft. Obviously, they're the 210 models, which is super cool. Um, I have seen videos of one of these F-14s flying with some Swiwin 190s and these 210s are going to be ballistic in this aircraft. But uh, the primary thing about it, it's going to have an amazing amount of thrust when you need it. So anyways, we've got a pair of Jetsmunts 210 turbines going in. Now one of the cool things that I want to touch on here is the Unilight systems. Skymaster not providing the light system. If you watch the unboxing, you heard about that. So um, not their fault. What actually happened was the light system was never added to the order. So, you know, yes, that's a bad thing. Um, this probably cost a substantial amount more than the Skymaster setup. But I'll tell you, at the end of the day, this Unilight setup is going to be way better. So um, this was all supplied through me and uh, we've got something special in this package right here, which I hinted at in the first video. So let's take a look. Okay, so we'll go through all these different lights and what we're using them for. But uh, this is the brand new high-end light controller from Unilight. Uh, this is not available to the public right now, but uh, we got exclusive access to this controller and uh, it should be available very soon, but this is the brand new controller uh, that will be uh, the top of the line controller by Unilight soon. So anyways, that's what's gonna be uh, primarily, obviously powering and making this whole system work. We've got Unilight afterburner rings. Now these are gonna be awesome. The, the pipe outside diameter I think is 100 mill millimeters. So we went with the 108s to 122s. There's enough room. So it's kind of working together with the guys at Unilight to put this package together. So they have updated their F-14 package. So if you happen to be building, building one of these planes and you wanna go with the Unilight setup, um, it will be what's featured in the video as far as their current package goes. So we've got the pair of afterburners there, which is gonna be phenomenal. Uh, what do we got here? So this is the module plus. So this is the PC programming thing, which uh, kind of coincides with the controller, obviously. Uh, this is the spotlight we used for the nose. Now later in this video, uh, which it's already been recorded, but later in this video, we'll, when we put the gear back together, we're also gonna, I'll show you guys how I made the spotlight work on the setup. Uh, we've got lenses, that's open too, because we used one of the lenses on the nose light. Uh, this is one of the wing lights. So I'm just showing you guys all the labels so you know what you're getting. 
Uh, right fin trailing, okay. Left leading edge fin is red. Now the one thing we're missing that's en route is the white light rear facing uh, right fin, I think is what it is. So that one we won't have in this package, but it's coming. Uh, this is, I can't read my own writing. Oh, intake. So this is one of the four intake lights. So there's two lights on the intakes, tops and bottoms. Uh, so we've got uh, two of each. So two green, two red. So intake, 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 and intake. So those are all the intake ones. Uh, this is the module for the afterburner lights. So they've got basically their own power source. We're gonna be using the same power source, but they've got their own power source with the uh, afterburner controller, which is really slick. Uh, chin pod light is right here. And then we've got the other wing light, the red side. So that is the Unilight setup that's going in this aircraft. Um, really excited to put this thing in. We're also gonna be making some special lenses for the light setup as well too in certain areas. So uh, stay tuned for the light install. That's gonna be wicked. All right, so next thing we'll touch on is the Jetty products and the receiver products. So what uh, is gonna be powering all of the electronics on this aircraft is the Jetty central box. Now I am not super, as I mentioned, not super uh, in the know with Jetty stuff. So this is gonna be a great learning experience. Um, so that's the, the central hub of the system. Uh, one of the receivers is right here as well. So this is the duplex Rex 12 US receiver. And then we've got uh, some more receivers and a remote switch as well coming. Uh, the gyro used in this aircraft is gonna be a Cortex. So that's uh, kind of normal, uh, normal fare. This is the same one that I installed in my Huracan, uh, which again, I haven't used yet, but really excited to use that. Uh, we are installing a onboard compressor system, same unit that we're installing in the F-18 build, which is right behind you guys. So this uh, one interesting point with, uh, with the V-Speak compressor is when you, use this with a PowerBox core system or a Jetty system, uh, you've got control, way more control with those two radio systems currently uh, with this particular unit. So uh, it's gonna work out well on this aircraft. And uh, you can also do some reprogramming of that onboard compressor with either a Jetty box or a Jetty uh, transmitter, and I'm assuming a PowerBox transmitter as well. All right, so let's cover the servos here. So we've got these uh, two big MKS servo arms. Now those are for these guys right here. So these are the um, eight millimeter output uh, shaft servos from MKS and uh, just a great, great servo. So we're gonna use those on the elevators of this aircraft and uh, Elevator servos there. We've got some, these are the 9930s here. And uh, those, I think we've got three more of those coming. So, and then we've also got the uh, brushless 599s. We've got a pair of those. So I can't remember exactly where those are going. I think it's elevator. Uh, this is gonna go on flaps. And then we've got um, rudder, rudder, steering. We're using the 747 servos. So that's what those are for. And then we've got the HV69. This is for the tail hook. So that's gonna be incorporated into the pod that the tail hook mounts to. So all of our wiring on the aircraft is gonna be power box uh, wire and ends and everything. So uh, that's the power box tray. It gets its own tray or bin. And we'll be using kind of all the normal things that I uh, would generally use in my build in most areas like the ashlock connectors, um, wire holders, things like that. So uh, for UATs, we're gonna be using the MAP high flow four ounce UATs or bubble traps. Uh, these are simple units, well-priced units, great units. The one thing 
That is nice with these units as they take up a little bit less space than some of the really fancy ones that are available now. The F-14, it's a big aircraft, but unfortunately it's fairly tight with room because you really don't get to mount anything in the back of the aircraft. Everything's got to be mounted in the nose, midsection, that type of thing. So it's a little bit, uh, a little bit tight. So we've also got uh, some other things coming, uh, uh, Jetronic air valves, and we've got the, uh, the main hub box that controls the retracts and stuff. We've already covered that in the unboxing. So that is basically the equipment that is going in that aircraft right there. Uh, really excited to, uh, to get going on this build. So the next portion of this video is gonna be putting the gear back together. This was actually recorded before this video. To you, it's not gonna seem like that. Maybe my hair is longer. I've got different whiskers on my face, but uh, so let's hop in to the putting the gear back together and making a scale nose light for the F-14. You'll notice beside me that there's a whole bunch of gear parts and uh, it's time to put these gear back together. And great time in the video guys to give a shout out to you guys that have donated to the shop build. Your names will be scrolling up here on the screen. I just wanna give you a sincere thank you for all your donations. Uh, whether they have been big or small, it is truly helpful to get the new shop up and running. Um, it's, it's awesome. It's really, really cool, really appreciated. And uh, sincerely thank you very much for your donations. All right, so you see all of the gear parts here. We've got the front gear, one of the mains, another one of the mains. They are all painted, all ready to be put back together. So let's see what kind of magic we can work out here. I don't think there's anything special putting the stuff back together other than we just wanna make sure that it goes back together the same way, everything works well. We will need to refill the front gear with oil and air and everything. Now the Skymaster gear comes with these big Allen key fittings. On the mains, it's at the top where you'd fill it with oil. So anyways, we'll go through that process on the mains. I'll probably show you guys that stuff, but uh, let's see what we can do here. Uh, whoa, that was easy to get everything on the table where it belongs. Let's try that again and see if we can get this stuff assembled. Unfortunately, guys, the magic powers won't let me put this all together without actually sharing some information with you. So as we put this, uh, this together, you wanna be mindful of what you are putting back together. So obviously what I mean by that is Loctite, right? We're gonna be putting Loctite on everything, but also when you've taken the, uh, the main wheels apart, uh, it's important to put some, either some silicone grease or just shock fluid. Uh, on the O-rings as you put them back together to make sure they don't leak. So just a couple little tips for you. And uh, if there's anything else, I'll share that with you as well too, so. Oh, and just like that guys, the one gear is complete. Let's do the next one. And just like that, number two is done. The other main is finished. Uh, a couple important points here. Um, when you're putting in C-clips, okay, so there is, when you take a close look at a C-clip, there's like a flat side of the C-clip and there's kind of a rounded side of the C-clip. You wanna make sure that you put the flat side of the C-clip out towards the end of the pin. Um, that ensures that the C-clip can't pop off because the rounded part would let it slide off easier. Little tip for you, maybe even a tip time. Does it classify as a tip time? Maybe. Now we got the main to do. And just like that, through the magic of cameras, we are done. So uh, tabletops all cleaned up, cleaned up all of the paint pieces floating around everywhere and we got the front gear all back together. Uh, works a lot better now that it's been serviced as well too, everything's a lot smoother. Uh, a couple of the key points. So I used 40 weight shock oil, which is just RC car 40 weight silicone shock oil. So that's what I used in the front. Uh, damping feels good, added a little bit of air in there. 
uh, just to make it, uh, it move. It is probably a little bit soft right now, but we'll see how that all works out. So anyways, front gear is done. All of the gear is back together. All right, guys, so uh, moving on to the next steps with the gear. Now, obviously we, well, not obviously, I'm, but I'm telling you, uh, we cannot uh, weather this gear until we get the decals. Yes, in Canada we say decals, but I will also say decals for everybody that gets mad when I say decals. So we've got some decals coming from Cali Graphics for the gear. Uh, I don't want to start weathering the gear and then try and get the decals decals on after the, uh, the weathering's done. So what we're going to do on the gear is we are going to work on the nose light next. So what my plan is, is I am going to cut off the scale uh, lamp area and I am going to replace that scale lamp with this guy. Now, what I did when I ordered this for this aircraft is we have the exact same diameter on this light. So once it's installed, it will look very, very similar to, uh, to what's on there right now. So what we need to do is come up with a mounting system. So when this is installed on the strut, We've got an eighth of an inch behind the uh, 3D printed piece, which is great because that's exactly the amount of space we need for some eighth inch aircraft ply. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut this existing lens off and this little piece right here, I'm also going to shape that to butt into the bottom of the Unilite light and what we're using for this guy is there's the number right there but uh, I was working with Unilite when I put this order in to put the new package together for the F14 which is right there um, because the older package they had was uh, quite old and they hadn't updated it for quite a while so Anyways, we worked out a great new lighting system for this aircraft. All right, so this is the plan with the light that I've come up with. So what I did was I sanded the back of, or roughened up the back of the, the light itself with my Dremel and glued this piece of ply. Now this piece of eighth inch ply, aircraft ply is probably too big but that's okay. We only needed it as wide as that piece right there. So one of the problems we have is if we put this on the underside of that wood, um, it needs these holes to slip over the little bump outs on the leg. So that's gonna be the next challenge once that cures, but you can see there, that I've got the piece of ply sitting nice and level. That's the reason for the sanding block there is just to hold it nice and level. So once that cures, we can do a little bit of sanding work, fitting work, get this fitted on that side, right? So the, the forward facing side of the light and uh, probably drilling holes through the plywood for these to go over top of the leg. Uh, if that all works out good, then we'll end up gluing that light to this piece. All right, so the wood piece glue has worked out successfully. Now the next step here is I have taken the base piece and high sawed it to the light assembly and the wood assembly. Now we're gonna have to drill that out afterwards, which is no problem. Uh, there's a mounting bolt right underneath the clamp in the center of your screen, right underneath that area right there. So what we'll do at that time is we'll just drill through the whole assembly and then we'll have to put a recess piece on the back 
that allows that piece to go into. So I think that's gonna work out awesome. And uh, once this is all done, we'll do some sanding and molding and stuff like that. And we'll probably paint most of the light housing white, leaving the reflector silver, of course. So uh, happy with the way that that's working out. All right, guys, so we've got everything set up here now for the light system. So what we need to do next is we need to take our Dremel out and we're just going to Dremel the excess wood and epoxy from this side. Now this is all cured. It's been a, um, about eight hours since I put this together. And uh, then what we're going to do is we are going to look at fitting this thing on the nose strut. So step number one here is Dremel the light. All right guys, so I spared you the whole painting process again, but also ended up painting the light, uh, the actual Unilite itself. So we just masked off the lens there with a piece of masking tape, used an X-Acto blade, cut around the perimeter and painted her all up. So it's still a little bit wet. So we're letting that cure, but uh, that is getting really close. Now, one of the final things I'm thinking about doing, haven't figured out if this will work yet, but um, this, so the lens itself, um, it's concave as you can see there. So the lens is designed to fit in the light like this. So basically the concave section here points out, okay? So what we can do is a couple things here. Number one, at the very minimum, we're gonna be gluing this lens to the light like that because it makes the light work better. Um, so that's the kind of the first step. Second step is using or reusing this 3D printed light piece. So what I'm thinking about doing is taking my Zona saw and just cutting about halfway down those ribs there. So about where the top of my fingernail is and taking this piece and gluing it over top of the lens. Now that would absolutely finish off that light and make it look beautifully stock, other than the shape of the back, right? Like we're, we're, we're not getting that round shape, but that's totally okay because that's a nice bright light. This is a cool housing. So I'm gonna uh, see if I can cut that and make that work. Um, it's more about how I can get this to be held. So I think I might use my vise for my drill press, but we'll see how this works out. All right, guys, so the idea of cutting that uh, housing apart worked out absolutely awesome. So what I did here with the lens is if you look at the lens here, I'll try and focus in on it. So the bottom part of the lens here, I actually took my Dremel and sanded that to about a 45 degree angle. Now the reason for that is when you fit this lens inside of the light, I needed it to sit a little bit lower. And the reason for that is so the previous light housing piece that I cut off fits on there. So that worked out absolutely awesome. Really happy with that. I'm gonna let this paint cure a little bit longer before I glue these pieces together, but uh, that is outstanding. That's gonna be a wicked setup for that front nose light. So that is a great first step for this landing gear and uh, making headway on this. So uh, next thing we're gonna do is, uh, these are just gonna be scale bits. So we're gonna fill this in with uh, I, whatever the colors are, red, yellow, green, or something like that. I'll have to look it up and see. But uh, we're just gonna fill those in uh, at some point with a little uh, colored piece. That's gonna look good as well too. All right, so we are all installed on the front landing light, strut light, whatever you wanna call it. And uh, worked out good. So I just uh, put the lens in there, put a little bit of the E6000, which is the same as the goop stuff that I use, but the E6000 is a little bit thinner and uh, then put the cap on the light and that is all curing right now and I think it looks awesome. It's gonna be a pretty wicked light, so success. All right guys, so that is everything for this video. Um, we got all of the equipment kind of laid out. 
we got our gear put back together and uh, it was a, definitely a successful video. So going forward on the F14 build, it's gonna be a little bit sporadic. We're still waiting for the radio system to show up. Uh, we're still waiting for the decal decal kit from Cali Graphics. Uh, once we get that, then we'll go into weathering the gear. The weathering of the gear, I'll probably try and do as a completely standalone video. That's why I don't want to start any of it until I get that graphics kit. So um, anyways, hopefully you guys are enjoying the 14 build. It's going to start to get pretty serious here as we dive into things. Uh, the lighting system is also probably going to be a standalone video as well too because there's so much involved in installing this light setup or we may just plug it in throughout the video as we get through different portions, stages, pieces of this aircraft. So you guys will get uh, little bits and pieces throughout the build series. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. It's free to subscribe to the channel and subscribers help. Our next big milestone on the channel is 20,000 subscribers and I think we're about 1,500 away. Not that it does anything for the channel. It's more of just like a wow, we hit 20,000. So, but thanks guys for watching and we will see you in the next video.